Hi dear music friends, welcome back again. Today I'm going to answer one of the most frequently asked questions. How do we uh, identify the keys when your question to a piano composition has many sharps, flats and accidentals for modulations? In this video, I'm going to share important four rules to look out for when you want to identify keys and cadences accurately. Also, you'll be impressed how this method can help you uh, to complete your piano composition within 20 minutes during a grade 8 theory exam and score very well for it. For those who are visiting my channel for the first time, my name is Jenny and in the past 15 years, many students have completed grades 1 to 8 within one year under my music theory crash course. One of my students, Oliver Lin, has even won the award for a songwriting competition. Please subscribe to his channel uh, for his latest song album. Now, I'm going to share all my secrets about scoring well for ABRs and theory exam and that is one of my passion in life and can't wait to share all secrets with all of you uh, who also love music composition for free so I need response from you guys as an encouragement for me uh, please subscribe to my channel and click on the notification button to receive the bonus videos specially made for subscribers and updates uh, for those who already subscribed I want to say a big thank you because it means a lot to me and you can share my videos with your friends so that more people uh, will subscribe. This is the question 2 of uh, EBRS and Grade 8 uh, Music Theory exam that I'm going to cover today. By the way, there are many ways to answer uh, this question. What I share here is just a suggestion that I find easy to understand and help you to feel in the answer quickly. If you have better ideas or better solutions on doing this question, you can explore other possibilities using the same concept and exploit or try it out on the piano. Without further ado, let's start the lesson now. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you. Hi, welcome back to another video. So uh, when you encounter a video like this, there has many uh it has some accidentals, you have G sharp. And later on, we have C sharp and also A sharp, C sharp. So many accidentals, sharps, flats, and natural. Don't be panic. Basically, you just need to follow uh, four rules to identify the uh, modulations first. So first, uh, what you can uh, check is the key signatures. Of course, it's the key signature. Secondly, you need to look at the accidentals. And thirdly. Uh, you need to check the opening and ending of each phrase, uh, opening chords and or ending chord of each phrase, and then also you can uh, by looking at the, uh, you can look at the cadence of each phrase uh, to confirm that there is a modulation. So uh, right from beginning, you can see this is a G B D. Okay, it's not a G major chord, and also you have F sharp. If we only have F one sharp, and it's not a G major chord, apparently this is a G major key. Uh, next, you can see that there is a G sharp. We only have a G sharp. So if there is a G sharp here, this G sharp is very unusual. So for key signature of sharps, uh, you, if you only have a G sharp and the chords here, they're giving you a hint A and E. So apparently A and E can form A C E chord. A C E. So this is chord one. Okay. So um, you start with an A minor. You can see this is the starting of phrase. So when this phrase starts with an A minor, A minor chord, and there is a seven note G sharp, they raise a G sharp. Means this is in A minor. Okay. So this is how you can see uh, there is a modulation. And let's look at the ending of this phrase because just now uh in the third rule we, we I say that we need to look at the opening and ending of the phrase. So now let's look at the ending of this phrase. The ending of this phrase ends with G, B, and D. Uh, it ends with a G major chord one of G major. So apparently this one go back to a G major uh G major key. And also because the G no longer has a sharp, no more G sharp. Okay. So over here there is a G sharp. But over here G go back to a natural. So apparently this is no longer in A minor. Okay. So in G major. And later on they add on a C sharp. So over here you have an F sharp. The original sharp is F sharp. Now they add on a C sharp. So F sharp plus C sharp it can be a D major. So how do we confirm that this is a D major? By looking at the opening of this phrase, D, F, A. So this is a rule number three, rule number three. So first, the key signature is F sharp, C sharp. Okay, so look at the C sharp is accidentals. And rule number three say that uh, the opening chord 
is DFA. Opening code is DFA, D major. Okay, so after that, uh, let's move on to the next phrase. Next phrase, uh, they give you another hint here. Uh, you have a G, B, G and B. So it's very likely to be a G major. Okay, you can say this is G major because it ends with a G major chord one. Okay, so since you have a chord one here, we can assume that this can be five to one or something to one. Okay, so let's plan this to be a G major here. Um, and then we will try to find cadence later on. Okay, over here. Uh, before G major, we can have a cadence here, cadence here. Okay, we just make some assumption first. Okay, uh, after that, the next phrase, you'll see a new accidental, which is a C sharp. Again, we have F sharp, C sharp here. So uh, since you have F sharp, C sharp, very likely it's a D major. And you also see D and F. Okay, so this can be a D, F, A chord. You end with a D major chord. So let's assume this to be a D major first. And the next bar, you see a very odd accidental which is A sharp. And you also see C sharp. So C sharp is normal because F sharp and C sharp can form a complete key signature. Okay, F sharp, C sharp can be D major. But when you see uh, unusual accidentals, which is an A sharp here, so you in this case, we can treat the unusual accidental, which is A sharp, as a seven note of a minor key. Okay, if A sharp is a seven note, you raise a semitone up, goes one semitone higher, you will get a B. So if this is a B minor, we assume this is a B minor, we must make sure they are F sharp and C sharp. Because in B minor, uh, we have key signature of two sharps, F sharp and C sharp. And then the seven note, we raise the seven note A sharp here. So from here, you can confirm that this is in B minor. Now towards the end, uh, towards the end, the uh, A no more sharp, A is natural. So A no more sharp, only left C sharp. So that means you only left with F sharp and C sharp. Okay, so you can say this is a D major. Let's assume this to be D major because it ends with a D tonic. Okay, so later, uh, after you find out all this modulation, uh, you can start to plan all the chords. Okay, so now let's plan the chord progression and figure out what. So now let's find out the chord progression because chord progression and cadences are the very useful information to identify the uh, change of key of modulations. Okay, so uh, G major over here already set GBD. So over here you have D, F, A. Okay, so over here you can use, you can say that this is a chord 5, D, F, A. So from here you can double confirm this is a G major because there is an imperfect cadence over here. 1 to 5 is imperfect cadence. Next, um, you have an E, G, and B. So by looking at E, G, B, it can be a chord 6, okay? E, G, B, it can be chord 6. And end with a D, F, A. Uh, can be called 5. Okay. So if you think 6 to 5 is not so good, uh, you can change this E, G, B into another chord, which is a C, E, G, B. If you think it's not so good, then you can just add a letter in front and it becomes a chord 4, C, E, G, B, and go to chord 5. Next. A minor, you have an A, C, E here. And you know that in next bar, we're planning to go to G major. So uh, over here, before you modulate to a new key, we will always try to have a, a cadence, okay? So chord one, you can go to chord five, which is an E, G, B, to form an imperfect cadence before you go to G major. So over here, you have G major. Before going to one, you can have another cadence, which is five, D, F, A. So from here, when uh, this bar can form a cadence, you know that this is uh, G major. Okay, in next bar, you start with D, F, A, which is a tonic chord. So D, F, A, uh, you, the, for the second half of the, of the bar, you have a C and G. And so happened that in D major, chord 5 is A, C, E, G. And this chord consists of the note C and G, okay? Um, let's move on to the next bar in G major. So we already have an imperfect cadence to end the D major. Now you can move on to a G major. So G major here, just now we say that it ends GBD. So over here, since it's completely empty at the first half of the bar here, you can use chord 5, uh, which is D, F, A. Okay, so uh, let's move on. So over here, you know, it's already a D major, A, C, E, G, and D, F, A. So this bar is done. Next bar, you have a B minor. Mm, 
by looking at the notes, if you don't know what chord you can use, you can just name the notes. A, or G, E, A, and G. It looks like a A, C, E, G. So uh, over here, this A, E, and G already done. So, but the first, second half over here, the A start to have a sharp. So over here, you can assume this to be chord five. Uh, F, A, C, E, G. You can use uh, 5, 9. F, A sharp, C, E, G. Because just A, C, E, G is chord 7. If you use A, C, E, G itself, it's a chord 7, which is not uh, very good. It wouldn't sound very nice because it's a diminished chord. So uh, in order to make it sound better, I add F in front. So this becomes a 5, 9. F, A, C, E, G. And over here, this is a B. B. F and D. The main note here is B D F. So this is B D F chord one. So this five one can form a perfect cadence. Um, at the last bar we already have five to one. But don't forget you have an E and G here. So uh, E and G uh, so happen that you can use chord two. Two B is uh, E G B. As you know, uh, chord two B is use very very frequently used before the cadence uh, 2b can also uh, be used as approach chord to approach the cadence and help you to score well okay so so next when you want to um paint the notes you need to look at the uh, left hand rhythmic patterns and also accompaniment patterns over here in bar one you can see that it starts with four quibbles okay so bar three also starts with four quibbles and it's like um broken chords um Broken chords pattern, so you can also follow the same pattern. So you can use G because the nearest note is here, F. So I choose the nearest note to so start with G, uh, C, B, C. And you notice by doing this, the left hands can connect smoothly to the next group of notes. Okay, uh, so this is how I um, fit, how I choose the notes to be in. Uh, in next bar, um, left hand you have four quibbles and second half you can follow either this pattern or this pattern or pattern of bar one or bar two so over here i want to choose a uh, pattern of bar two so uh, i decided to choose e again or you can choose b and b i repeat the b and in between i add the c okay or you if you don't want to use auxiliary note c is an auxiliary note you can choose chord note B, G, and B. Okay, now for right hand, the top note will be your main melody. The B at, on top here will be your main melody. So you need to choose the nearest note to continue from here. So after B, I choose to go to C. Uh, after C, I want to go to the A. C, I go to A. Okay, between C and A, I play in a B as a passing note. So because this is an imperfect cadence, so you don't forget to uh, resolve it. So for the rules of imperfect cadence, the tonic note is A. The A needs to go to G sharp okay, to end the phrase. So I put a G sharp here. Okay, so to resolve this cadence. And after G sharp, the next bar, I want to choose the nearest note, which is A. Um, since this is a 5-1, again, this is a perfect cadence. So don't forget, you need to lead your melody to go to leading note, which is the F. F sharp must go to G. Okay, they already give you the tonic here. So you need to pick up the leading note here, F sharp. So between A and F sharp, I can add G as a passing note. Okay, now left hand, as usual, I want to have four, semi -quib uh, four quibbles, like bar 1, 2, and 3. Okay, bar one, two, and three always start with uh, four quibbles. So over here, I want to be consistent. So I also do the same thing. Um, and I decided to choose F, uh, D, A, D, all chosen from the chord. Okay, so I lead F sharp, go to G. Okay, so this uh, G major end here, Next phrase, the first half is already done. D, F sharp, A, already done. Let's move on. 
the second half of the bar is totally uh, completely uh, missing. So uh, over here, you notice that the left hand accompaniment pattern has been changed. It changed to quiver, crochet, quiver. So over here, I also must change to quiver, crochet, quiver. So I choose to have a G, uh, C, A. Uh, this is a syncopated rhythm. So this is another pattern of quiver, crochet, quiver. So next bar, I also choose F, D, and A. Then next bar, so this is another pattern, another grouping. So next bar, I can choose G, D, and so happen that the B end here, at the end here is a quiver. So you can see this is a pattern that I follow. Okay, so if they change the pattern here, then you need to be consistent to continue uh, using the same pattern. And in this bar, you already have one and a half count for the second half of this bar. So you just need to pin uh, one more uh, quiver. So you can, I, over here, I choose to have a C sharp. The reason why I want to have a C sharp, because I want it to resolve properly. The B go to C sharp is the leading note go to tonic. So I want it to end with tonic for the rest of this bar uh, uh, so that we can move on to the next bar and choose the nearest note. Okay, so in G major, the right hand note, uh, nearest note that you can choose after the C sharp is B. Um, so after D, the next note is a B. So between D and B, I can just add in a passing note, C. Okay, so this C is just a passing note. Okay, then second half is already done. So we can move on, okay? Now, let's move on to the next, next uh, line. So in next line, uh, D, F, A. So the left hands, you notice that the left hands, the common pattern is back to uh, four quivers. So uh, I also go back to four quiver and it's up, go to down, higher note, go to lower note. So over here, I also do the same thing. B, A, make it simple. B, A. And the right hand, I can choose from F, uh, go to A, because this is pointing upwards. So I go up to A. So between F and A, I can add a G. Just nice, and up, uh, the direction of the melody is going up. Mm, next one is F, A, C, E, G. So the, this part is already done. So uh, B minor start from the second beat because the A sharp uh, start, uh, start here. So between G, after G, I can go to... So over here in the last line, you notice that the left hand's uh, the common pattern go back to four quavers and it's up, down, up down, higher note, go to lower note. So I just follow the same uh, pattern like the first group. So I go to D, A, D, A. For the right hand, since it's going up, I can go to, from F, I can choose to skip to A. So, so nice that uh, F to A, in between F and A, I can add G as a passing note. And in next bar is uh, in B minor, and then the first beat is already done. And the B minor start with the second beat because the A sharp is here. So uh, I can choose to, from G, I can connect to the C. So from G to C, I can add A, B. Okay, so the B, B minor start from the second beat. So the A over here, don't need to add a sharp because the A not yet started. The B minor not yet started here. So um, over here, I just link it up with a quavo. Quiver, quiver. Okay, um, and this is called five. The root note is F. Um, so F cannot be missing because the root note is very important. So in that case, I add the F here. That will form a full harmony of chord five, nine. Um, over here, the A sharp is already go to B. So the leading note go to tonic. Uh, so after C, I go to B. So when the bass, bass line have leading go to tonic, the right hand, I resolve do, uh, super tonic, go to tonic. So happen that B and F, between B and F, you can add A and G as passing note. 
Now, um, for left hand, we have a D and then uh, you can choose B from the chord. Um, so last bar, we have a E, G, B. So since this is a chord two, the first inversion, uh, you can have a G at the base. G, G, G. And then next one is A, C, E. You can have A, C, A, and then D. Just end it with simple left hand note. Okay, so you can also have, uh, if you want to have chords, you can add uh, E to have more harmony. You can add E, uh, then here you don't need to add any more because the C sharp is already here. Okay, so uh, that's all for this question. This is the method that you can use to pick up the notes. And before you finish, um, uh, before you want to end this question two, you need to check all the accidentals. For instance, in A minor, you need to look for the seven note. Okay, so the G is the seven note. You need to raise the G sharp. Uh, for minor key, for major key, don't forget uh, G major, only have F sharp. And D major, don't forget your C sharp. And G major, back to F sharp. And the last line, you have a D major. And don't forget to check the C. Look for the C and add C sharp, but there's no C here. And for B minor, you need to uh, check on your six and seven note. But over here, the six and seven note, the seven note is here, six note is here. We are using the melodic form. So when seven and six note go down together in the descending scales, we would not, we don't need to uh, raise uh, both of them because when you're writing a melody, you should use melodic form for minor key, okay? So um, in future, one of my video will talk about uh, important rules to follow when you compose uh, uh, music in minor key. So please say subscribe so that you'll not miss out the important video like this. And the last bar, you need to add C sharp. You need to watch out uh, the note C. So if you don't have C, then uh, this is correct. Okay, uh, thank you for watching. Please stay subscribed and I look forward to seeing you in my next uh, video. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.